Hello everybody, welcome back to Gerson's Garage, the channel where we bring dead vehicles back to life, hopefully. Uh, as promised earlier, we are going to start taking the transmission out of the Firebird. Now, it's going to be a little easier process than normal because there's no engine in this car. Normally, you would have to disconnect the vacuum line to the modulator, you would have to disconnect the bell housing and the torque converter from the flywheel flex plate in order to get the transmission out. With this car, we just got to disconnect, you know, the transmission brace, the transmission cooler lines, the linkage for the shifter, backup uh, light harness, things like neutral switch harness, that kind of stuff. So, let's get started on it. And if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, please do. It helps grow the channel, and I would appreciate it. Okay, what we have here is the steering column lock. Basically what this does is when your transmission is in gear and you're driving down the road it prevents your steering, you know, from you locking up your steering column if you had to shut the car. Say if your throttle stuck and the car um, was going down the road and you panicked and shut the key off. Well, this prevents the steering column from locking. And it's just kind of a safety feature. So, we'll get the clip out. It doesn't want to come out. Well, probably because we're grabbing it from the wrong side. I'm looking at this from upside down, so <laughs> that doesn't help matters. This, luckily, because we have no engine in this car, is a lot easier if you had the than having the motor in the white. There it goes. Just a regular clip. And you can free that linkage up. And make sure you save your clip. And with these linkages, you want to make sure you mark, and we're going to mark which end goes where and stuff. Like I said in previous videos, you put these parts on a shelf, you let them sit there. It may be a while before you get back to the car, and you want to know where everything goes. And that's a good way to do it. So we'll do that and I'll get back to the video. Oh well, people are under the uh, under the car now. Oh and we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is gonna drain this transmission because one thing it's leaking fluid all over my garage. Second, I mean it's gonna make it lighter to remove from the car. So when I you got an air ratchet or an impact, that's the best way to go, half inch socket. Now, there's no drain plug in this transmission. So what you want to do is you want to take out all the bolts on either side, leave the end two bolts on either end. And what you're going to do is we're going to loosen those up a little bit and we'll take these out almost all the way and then we'll crack the pan. It's going to make a mess. Really not a lot you can do. I don't have a transmission drain pan so all I got is my little Harbor Freight oil drain here so it's probably going to make a little bit of a mess nothing you can do about it that's why I have a epoxy garage floor so. doesn't help too this transmission not being attached to a motor is lean. So it's going to make probably even more of a mess. Okay, now here's one thing. We got a bracket here for the shift cable. Attaches to the transmission pan. And this is where your diagrams and stuff come in handy. We're going to make a little diagram. You want to get stick labels um, and these little things here, we use these at our, where I work. Um, I will put a link where I get them off Amazon. They're shipping labels. And they have a little piece of wire here and we use them at work for parts and stuff and that's where I got the idea to use them for like restorations and stuff. Are there, if you get them off Amazon, they're not too expensive. 
and they're handy. I mean, you can use them for other things. So I will put a link in the description where to get these. Like I said, they're definitely handy to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little picture here. We're going to put linkage. And you don't have to be the next Norman Rockwell here. You just want to draw something that you can realize what the picture is. Now here, it's got one, two, three, four bolts. It's in the center bolts. So we're going to just draw a transmission pan. One, two, three, four bolts, and uh, an arrow to the two bolts that it goes to. Okay, and I'll attach that right to the ship linkage. Like I said, don't bash my artistry, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to, so you can understand where that part came from and how it goes back on there, because you might put this transmission back in this car and you get it back here on this these last two bolts and then oh, the linkage doesn't hook up well now you got to take them back out and stuff it's just a time saver and helps you in uh, reassembling the car crack on that crack don't you know back them way out you'll really have a mess I gotta go down to Harbor Freight and get one of the little metal carts. It just make it a lot easier. I have no place to set these tools under here except on the floor. Okay, these ones I've looked at right up. Okay, we're probably going to set the pan over here because it's transmission is kind of leaning to this side, so it's the food's going to tend to want to run out right here. Now you can all laugh at me as a mess I'm about to make. So humid in here today, these glasses are fogging right up on me. We had a mild day the other day, relatively low humidity, and that's the day I should have been doing this. Now it's getting kind of humid again. And I mean, I can't even complain. I know some of you in other areas of the country are going through hell right now. I have a friend that lives in Delaware, and she says it's been really unbearable down there. My daughter lives in Orlando, so... Well aware of what some of you are going through. Okay. Oh, I see what's happened. The pan is hitting this because what's happened. The transmission is actually sitting like this because the boulder's not supporting it. So the pan's actually hitting the cross member. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is put these two bolts back in and we're going to have to take the fluid out the front, which is going to make a mess. But um, I don't really know the way I can do it. So. Okay, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay. 
don't know how you guys feel about it, but I've always hated the smell of transmission fluid. There's one thing on a car I do not like the smell of. Especially bird transmission fluid. Just nasty stuff. I always give guys that do transmission work for a living a lot of credit. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the shifter from the linkage. And there's this pin here that the cable attaches to with a cotter pin. I already bent back the tabs of the cotter pin. There you go. Now that will free up the shift linkage. And of course that washer just went flying in there, but we'll get it. I didn't go down in the thing. And as you can see over here, there's a, that's the rod for the um, steering column lock. We'll take that off. There's a uh, bolt here that holds it on. And then we got to take this off for the transmission up here. Now uh, it's under a little torque. There is a clevis pin right here. We'll pull that out and get that freed up. Um, I may have to jockey around the transmission a little bit because there's weight on it. Like I said, normally this would be supported by the engine so you wouldn't have to be dealing with all this like I'm dealing with right now. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what it takes to remove the transmission from one of these cars. Okay, these are your two transmission cooler lines right here. And you got to remove those. Um, undo them here. You're going to want to use flare wrenches if you have them. If not, make sure you're at least using good wrenches. Uh, you want a 9 to hold the fitting that goes into the transmission. And the uh, flare nut here is half inch, I believe. So we're going to unhook those right now and get them out of the way. And there is some fluid in them, so you want to make sure there's a pan under it. Okay, here you see the actual transmission being removed from the car. Unfortunately, we didn't take video of it because it was too hot to mess with the camera the day we did it. But you can see the jack in position underneath it, and the end result, the transmission coming down out of the vehicle. And it was a little bit of a tight fit because, unfortunately, we just can't get the car high enough to really clear the transmission, but it did work. Everybody, I just wanted to give you a little update where we were with the transmission. We got it out of the car yesterday. My son came over and helped me. It was not a bad job. Unfortunately, we did not set the camera up. It was very humid in the garage yesterday. We were just very sweaty. It was a hot mess, but we did get it out. We did have a little... We had my lift only goes up so high because this garage is, I mean, I'm just restricted with my ceiling height here. So I can get underneath the car, but my jack only goes down so far. So we had to kind of wiggle the transmission and transmission jack all through the back. We did get it where we could get it and lift it off the transmission jack and get it on the ground. Uh, fortunately, when you take the torque converter and fluid out of a turbo hydromatic 350, they're not very heavy. So we were able to do that. And, uh, now I got the car, the undercarriage kind of um, where I can work on it. I ordered some POR Marine Clean or whatever they call it now. And I'm going to start degreasing the bottom of the car, start getting it prepped for uh, taking care of the rust under there. There's a little bit here in the rear valance that needs to be taken care of. Uh, you may have seen that if you watched the gas tank video. I got to take the spoiler and rear bumper and taillight assemblies off. And there's a couple small holes in the trunk I want to patch. It doesn't warrant a whole trunk floor, but it does need to be addressed. So we'll fix that. But right now we're talking about transmissions. We got the transmission out. Um, I'm draining the torque converter right now. Even though I don't plan on reusing it, I don't want it laying around my floor with a bunch of transmission fluid in it. So I don't know where I'm going to go yet with it. I looked at jegs and a couple of some in a couple other places last night for stall high stall speed converters i'm thinking maybe 2000 25 2300 stall speed and a shift kit and a rebuild kit but then again i may go with an automatic overdrive that's more money but then again i'm thinking well 
you're going to do that, maybe you ought to just put a manual in there. But then I'm thinking, eh, I don't know if I want to go back to a manual transmission. I, the Roadrunner's got one, the Hudson Terraplane's got one, and it, it kills my knee afterwards. Kind of like it is kneeling on it right now. But I'll give you a quick rundown of the tranny. Okay. Obviously, we got the torque converter out of the way. Here's your input shaft and stuff, your pump. I don't seem to be any real issues there. I think this would be kind of an easy rebuild. I imagine with a 352 barrel in it, this thing wasn't really that abused. Um, got your tick down cable here. Now, if you're familiar with the Turbo Hydromatic 300, you have an electric kick down on those. Uh, your vacuum line for your modulator back here. I had one of those go on a Chevy truck one time and it was, uh, I thought I blew a head gasket. I was a teenager. Got this white smoke pouring out the exhaust. I'm like, oh man, I blew a head gasket. And what it was was that modulator had gone, diaphragm had gone bad into it and it was sucking transmission fluid up into my engine through that uh, vacuum line. It's one of those uh, lessons you learn. So I still got the uh, shifter uh, linkage on there, part of it. But yeah, if I go this route, I think this transmission's probably got good bones in it. It's got to be beefed up a little bit if I'm going to put, you know, a 383 uh, motor in it with probably over 400 foot-pounds of torque and stuff. So, the dipstick tube is in good shape. Uh, it's obviously going to need a new seal in the bottom of it. We had to take that out to get the uh, transmission out of there. But overall, it wasn't too bad of a job. Um, we did have some trouble getting the rear mount off. What happened was, because the transmission didn't have the engine supporting it, it was actually leaning down in the front, even with the jack, and had the safety chain over this. And we're trying to lift up in the back of the tranny to get the uh, your transmission mount on these. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a center stud. And we couldn't get that clear of the um, cross brace to get the cross brace out of the way. So we ended up having to unbolt the whole transmission mount, which wasn't a big deal, but when we got that out of the way, it came right out. So, that's uh, where we're at with the transmission. I'll probably give you a, an update when we do some more work underneath. Or there's other, I don't know really where I'm going to go next with this. Probably going to start taking this, the rear of it apart, you know, so I can get in there and work. And like I said, i got to get under the car and degrease it, clean it up. Um, I don't know what we're going to do underneath yet. I, um, I'm going to take care of the rust. If I'm going to put PR15 over it, or I was even thinking about trying maybe some of that Eastwood uh, rust encapsulator or something like that. Who knows? So until next time, have a great day. God bless and take care.